Hello and welcome back again to OnChain Reaction. I'm your host James Bennett and today we're going to look at what's going on with Bitcoin on and off the chain. So a pretty exciting day recording this 26th of July at half past 10 in the UK. You can see that price has broken upwards after consolidating in that $32,000 to $34,000 range over the last few weeks. Uh, that breakout on the right hand side of the chart there you can see has stopped just short of that sort of forty thousand forty one thousand dollar level that we saw at the beginning of this year and then again um, in the sort of early parts of June um, so what I want to go through today is whether I think that this is a sustainable move does it mean that Bitcoin is going to continue its uh, run up towards a hundred thousand dollars or perhaps is it a short-term move that will not be sustained so let's look at some of the on-chain data and exchange data to try and answer that picture with you today okay so this is probably the most important uh, slide of the deck that gives you an idea of why the price has been able to make that big move this morning um, in uh, gold you can see the uh, bitcoin price uh, and then that black dotted line horizontally it's a little bit faint there is at the $34,000 mark again looking at the price over the last month or so we haven't been able to break that $34,000 mark now what happened this time uh, and you can see that highlighted by the circle that big red bar indicates a huge uh, liquidation of around a billion dollars or a series of liquidations uh, at that $34,000 price level which has flipped uh, those shorts into longs as these short traders try to cover their positions we call it a short squeeze um, and that's basically ignited this breakout from 34 right up to 38 um, but the big question here is, is that sustainable? So now we're going to look at on-chain as well as um, some of the, the fund flows data to see, right, is this, is this something that can carry on upwards? Um, and as always, this is not financial advice, but, you know, the data tells a pretty good picture. So here we're looking at transaction count, the number of transactions taking place on the network. That's fairly flat. I mean, we've been on a downward trend from the beginning of this year, as you can see, uh, from about two and a half million uh, over a week um, down to about one and a half million over a week. So significantly less transactions on the network and quite a strong visual correlation there to price. Transactions have remained flat over the last couple of weeks, including this latest move. Moving on here, we're looking at the on-chain settlement value. This is the dollar value uh, that's being sent over the Bitcoin network. And again, you know, this slight uptick a couple of uh, weeks ago or a week ago, and now we're continuing that downtrend. I expect we'll see that tick up again slightly when we look at the data tomorrow um, as, you know, higher volatility often sees people in a sort of a state of um, activity or, or, or fl uh, f a flurry of activity and, um, yeah, so you might expect that to, to come up, but you know the picture is broadly that we remain in a downtrend uh, that was started sort of late um, May uh, of this year. Okay, this is now onto one of my favorite metrics, which is fees as a percentage of the total revenues. Now, this is a non-price indicator. Uh, you're literally looking at the fees in BTC terms as a as a percentage of the total uh, revenue, so fees plus newly uh, newly minted Bitcoin, um, and you know this tells a really good picture of the stage we are in different cycles. Uh, so what I've tried to highlight here is the the sort of 17 into 18 cycle, the sort of mid 19 cycle, and then of course this 21, uh, sorry 20 into 21 cycle. Um, starting with the 17 18 cycle, you know you can see that fees as a percentage of revenues climbed, climbed, climbed. It's the blue line there on a 14 day moving average, um, and then really snapped, broke down in about February 2018, uh, and the price followed shortly after highlighted in red there. If you move to the middle uh, red column, that's the, the sort of mid-19 uh, uh, mini cycle. Again, you can see that the trend there of fees as a percentage of revenues, blue line, climbing, 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 broke, price broke downwards. And then again, finally, you know, at the end of 2020, you can see a really steady increase there of fees as a percentage of revenues getting all the way up into the sort of 25% range. Um, and that, of course, broke a few weeks ago, as did the price. And you can see that it's really not showing much signs of recovery at the moment. OK, so that was a little look at what is sort of driving minor revenues. But what about their inventories? Well, 
interesting picture here is that miners continue to build their inventories and um, the longest sustained period that we've seen in this cycle. Um, we've seen this chart before, so I've just added you know, the latest data. Um, so on the right hand side, the blue bars there are the change in inventory on a daily basis. And you can see that they are consistently building their inventory. Those of you that follow the MRI metric will know uh, that this is now sort of at about 95% um, on the short term. But look, essentially what we're saying is that miners aren't really confident in the price at the moment. They don't think that the bid is strong enough to hold that um, you know, offloading of inventory. If they do start to sell into this price strength, then maybe there's something more sustained there. What might happen is that we'll see miners capitalize on this move because they know perhaps that it's not sustainable and will quickly move back down towards $34,000. But it's certainly going to be an exciting couple of days uh, on the Bitcoin network as that volatility has suddenly picked up again. Okay, so that's on chain. Uh, now let's look at the fund flows. We've talked uh, before about fund flows being a very important driver of Bitcoin's price because they're uh, you know, new capital coming into the space. And really, it's a flat picture again for the maybe fourth or fifth consecutive week. We're really pretty flat in terms of new Bitcoin coming in and Bitcoin going out. Uh, so, so far, I can say that it hasn't been a large inflow of funds uh, that have caused this sort of price breakout. But we will look again at the data tomorrow and Wednesday to confirm whether that is the case. This is daily close data. Um, so we will have to check back for that one. OK, uh, last couple of slides here. We're going to look at the sort of DeFi picture, um, but specifically focusing on Bitcoin here in this one. Bitcoin and Ethereum. So you've got your wrapped Bitcoin there, your Fobi Bitcoin, your Ren Bitcoin. Um, what's interesting here is that the, the Bitcoin on Ethereum has fallen for the first time so far in 2021. You can see the top right picture there uh, of your picture there. You can see wrapped Bitcoin is turning down for the first time since late December. Um, the green line yeah, that, that, that we're looking at. Uh, and, you know, there's not a huge amount to report there other than to say that perhaps, you know, some of the activity that's taking place is starting to fall off and those holding the wrapped Bitcoin are looking to liquidate their position and maybe move into something else, maybe hedge in uh, US dollars. We can't say exactly what they're doing with it yet, uh, but it's interesting to see that move to the downside. Um, finally, uh, stable coins. I've just put this in because I think it's a really interesting uh, picture. Uh, you, here we're seeing in blue three, sorry, we're seeing three different stable coins on this chart. In blue, US dollar circle, the company that of course just listed publicly. We've got Tether, um, a little bit controversial dollar peg, but the largest has been the largest in terms of total um, liquid supply. And then we've got Binance USD, which is of course the US dollar stable coin of the Binance exchange. And what we can see here is that US dollar circle and Binance USD have taken a big chunk a few big bites out of tether uh, particularly since may 2021 uh, and you know it's really positive to see more competition in the stablecoin market ultimately you know stable coins aren't as decentralized as something like bitcoin or ethereum and um, so we do need to as a space really promote that diversity so that not everyone is using exactly the same stablecoin um, and that's a really healthy uh, picture to see um, right. Well, that's it from me for now. As always, if you do have any follow up questions, reach out at info at .com, or you can just find me on Twitter at James on the chain and I'll be happy to chat with you there. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.